If you're about to buy a laptop, whether it's for coding, studying, editing, or just everyday use, stop right here and watch this video first. I'm gonna explain exactly how to pick the right one and share some things that nobody really talks about but everyone should know. Trust me, this video can work like a cheat sheet or formula every time you're buying a new laptop. Let's get into it. Step 1. CPU the main thing when choosing your laptop is the CPU, because the CPU is the brain of the whole system, so you should be careful. CPUs in laptops are like samples, because there aren't as many options as there are in PCs. Laptop CPUs are made by two manufacturers, Intel and AMD. Both Intel and AMD use a naming pattern that tells you three things. First the tier, like i3, i5, i7, i9 for Intel, and Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9 for AMD. Then you'll see a bunch of numbers. Don't stress over those too much. What matters is the first digit of that numbers, which tells you the generation. So for example an i7-14650, that's a 14th generation processor. After those numbers, you'll see a letter. This is called the suffix, and it tells you the type of performance you can expect. As a new user, you can understand it like this. i3 and Ryzen 3 are for low performance tasks like web browsing, office work, school slides or documents. i5 and Ryzen 5 are for gaming, editing and design, but can also do the basic tasks mentioned earlier. i7 and Ryzen 7 are for high performance like heavy editing, heavy gaming and similar tasks. i9 and Ryzen 9 are considered top tier, capable of everything, but they come at a high price. About the generation, just know what to avoid. In 2025, if you're considering Intel processors, don't buy anything below the 12th generation. The 10th generation Comet Lake and the 11th generation Tiger Lake were manufactured in 2020 and 2021, so they are already too old for laptops. This isn't like PCs, keep that in mind. With AMD, you can pretty much buy any generation, but newer is always better and has updated cores. But if you're confused, just check the suffix at the end of the GPU name. AMD uses the suffix U for low power power CPUs in thin and light laptops meant for light tasks. HS means high performance slim, suitable for light gaming and editing. If there's just an H, it indicates high performance, good for gaming, programming and heavy editing. HX means the laptop is top tier, it's the most powerful in that generation and tier, it can handle everything. Intel has more suffixes than AMD, but the meanings are similar. U means low performance, P is the performance oriented thin laptops, which are average, H means high performance and HX is the top tier. You may also rarely see the suffix E, which is intended for industrial or special use devices, but don't worry, it's not available for regular users. Finally, avoid the suffix Y, which means a very old, ultra-thin CPU and won't deliver regular performance. And also there are CPUs named M1, M2 and M3. These are for Apple laptops, I can film a separate video about them if you'd like. Leave a comment if you're interested. This was everything about choosing a CPU. Now let's move on to the next thing you definitely need to pay attention to. Step 2. GPU. Alright, let's talk about the GPU, another super important part for your laptop. If you've seen my old PC build videos, you might remember this. While the CPU handles the logic and calculations of the game, the GPU is like the artist. It takes care of how everything looks, textures, shadows, lighting and so on. To put it simply, the CPU decides where the tree and character go, and the GPU draws them. That's why your GPU matters, especially for gaming, editing and anything visual. To choose one, you need to know there are two main GPU manufacturers. AMD and Nvidia. You're probably wondering, what about Intel? Well, they do produce video cards for PCs, but in laptops they only make integrated GPUs. If you don't know what an integrated GPU is, I'll explain. There are only two types of GPUs in laptops and PCs, dedicated and integrated. The difference is integrated GPUs are built into CPUs. They are usually weaker but save energy. That's why every laptop has an integrated GPU. Dedicated GPU, on the other hand, are separate. Most of the laptops laptops have both integrated and dedicated GPUs, while others have only integrated ones. Laptops without dedicated GPUs are made for light and office work. You can't play heavy games on them. So if you want to play games or use heavy programs, you should look for laptops with dedicated GPUs. 
As I mentioned earlier, AMD and Nvidia are the two main brands. Each has its own models, but they're relatively easy to understand. For example, Nvidia uses the name GTX or RTX with serious numbers like 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. The higher the number, the stronger the GPU. AMD uses the RX name, with 50 and 60 series GPUs in laptops. If you want to know which one is better for your needs, I recommend watching benchmarks on YouTube, pretty simple. But here's a quick warning. Laptop and desktop GPUs with the same name are not the same. For example, an RTX 4060 on a desktop is much stronger than the RTX 4060 on a laptop. So always check benchmarks on YouTube before buying. That's pretty much everything you need to know about laptop GPUs. Now let's move on to the next step. Step 3. RAM. Let's talk about RAM. Yeah, one of the most important parts right next to the CPU and GPU. RAM is what lets your laptop actually do things while you're using it. If your laptop is too small or too slow, you start lagging, freezing, and pulling your hair out trying to multitask. To choose RAM, you just need some basic elementary school math. RAM stands for random access memory. That means the more RAM you have, the better your laptop will perform. But there are some universal guidelines you can follow. If you only plan to do light tasks, 8GB is enough. But for gaming, the minimum size you should go for today is 16GB. If you do multitasking or video editing, I recommend more than 32GB. Because for editing, 16GB can feel too small. Next, the type of RAM. It should be at least DDR4, but preferably DDR5, since it's much faster than older versions. However, DDR5 can be hard to find in budget laptops. By the way, if anything is confusing, check the description below. I'll leave links for laptops suited for gaming, programming, and editing. Now let's move on to the next step. Step 4. Storage. I hope even someone who knows nothing understands why storage is important. So I won't explain too much here. Just choose a larger capacity and make sure it's SSD not HDD. Just in case you don't know, HDD is the old kind of storage. It's much slower than SSD, but it's cheaper. So if you're buying a laptop for light editing and are on a tight budget, you can go with HDD. But in every other case, always choose an SSD to save your time and your nerves. Step 5. Display. This is the most important thing for me in a laptop. Because of the monitor size and type, I can decide whether I should buy a laptop based on its display. A laptop is meant to be a portable. That's why I prefer a proper size and good quality monitor rather than big, bulky machines with no hint of portability. Really, if I wanted a non-portable rig, I'd just build a PC for a cheaper price. So you have to consider these 5 requirements before choosing your laptop. The right screen size, resolution, panel type, refresh rate, brightness, and color accuracy. But not all of them are equally important. If some parameters don't meet your expectations, you can make an exception. And to be clear, let's start with the most important and move to the least. First on the list is resolution. There are tons of resolution types and I guess this is pretty obvious. HD. Full HD, 2K, and 4K. Most good laptops come with Full HD resolution. It's the sweet spot for most laptops. It looks sharp, it's standard, and it works for almost everything. Gaming, editing, school, you name it. HD? Forget it. Looks bad in 2025 and honestly just not worth it. Unless your budget is really tight. Now about 2K and 4K. Honestly, you won't even notice the difference on a small screen. These resolutions are better for bigger displays. Still, if you're buying a high-end laptop and it comes with 2K or 4K, go for it. Just don't chase it unless you really need it. The next important requirement is panel type. There are four main types. TN, VA, IPS, and OLED. TN is the cheapest, try to avoid it. VA is better, but still not great. IPS is the most common and ideal in most cases. I recommend it. But if you've got the budget, go for OLED. It's the best one available, with stunning color and contrast. Next is the refresh rate. This one is simple, the higher the number, the better. But remember, it's only the third most important thing. So if getting a high refresh rate means sacrificing a resolution or panel type, skip it. Refresh rate mainly matters for gaming or smooth animations. If you're just working and don't have the budget for more than 60 Hz, it's totally fine to go with a lower refresh rate. Now about screen size. Laptops come in many sizes, from as small as 13 inches up to 18 inches. 
This part really depends on your personal preference. For me, the smaller, the better, because it's a laptop, not a desktop. Usually 13-inch laptops are more portable, but also may feel cramped. I recommend going to a tech store and physically trying out different sizes so you know what feels right for you. Finally, brightness. It's not a deal breaker, but forgetting about it can cause problems later. Brightness is measured in nits. And as usual, the higher, the better. If you mostly stay indoors or shaded areas, 500 to 700 nits is enough. But if you like working outside or near windows, go for 1000 plus nits. That's everything you need to know about displays. So today I walk you through the 5 steps that really matter when you're buying a laptop. You can come back to this video anytime and use it as a formula for choosing your laptop. If anything was unclear, I've dropped some links in the description to good models for different needs. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe, take care.